Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Amen. God is good. Amen. Give him praise. Man, we're alive. Amen. We're breathing. Man, we got to give him glory. You know, I read a testimony and it said that, you know, whether he, he said he he was tripping, you know, it was he was on drugs and, and, and whatever. And, and but he said that what he's seen is that when he wakes up and they wake him up is that the is that the Lord has showed him that it's the one giving him breath. Amen. You know, whether it was a trip or a revelation, whatever it was, but God showed him that it was him giving him breath every morning. And that at that very instant when he was on drugs, that the Lord could take his life just like that. And at that very instant, he became sober. At that very instant, he, he, he acknowledged that the Lord walked in the room. And he says that the Lord gives you breath every morning. Amen. Amen. He wakes us up. Amen. Amen. We give him glory. God is good. Amen. Uh, you guys may be seated. Amen. God is good. Um, today, you know, Wednesday, we've been doing this study. Amen. Uh, if there's any kids in here, amen, you guys, uh, you guys may go back. Amen. I thank everybody, amen, for, you know, all the prayers. Amen. We got lifted up. Amen. Everybody that prayed for us. Me and my whole family, uh, well, not Lex, you know, she's been staying away. She locked, her, she locked herself in the room away from us, amen? But me and my wife and Joshua, amen, we're, we're under the weather, and it hit us hard, and, and man, I, I don't want anybody to be sick, amen? Because when you're sick, you miss church, and then you don't feel good. There's a lot to do in the house, and man, but, you know, it gives us a chance. Sometimes we need to get sick to rest. The Lord says, man, I need to get you sick or something so that you can rest. And that's what Pastor was talking about, that still spot, you know. You have to stay in bed. Maybe your bed is your still spot for them 20 minutes. You got to lay down and you're talking to the Lord, amen. You know, I was telling them how your day was, amen, that you need strength for what's coming. You know, all your problems, lay down on the bed, amen. You know, we all have problems, amen. We're not excused from problems, amen. As a Christians, we have problems, amen. Our problems don't go away. When I became a Christian, amen, I thought my child support was going to be gone, amen. My child support was still there, amen. It didn't vanish. My problems were still there. My probation was still there. You know, it didn't go away. But God gave me the strength to go through it, amen. Amen. Uh, Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, because you're so good, Lord God, and you're showing us, Lord God, in your word, Lord God, you've been showing us, Lord, in these last two months, Lord God, last four months, Lord God, you've been showing us, Lord God, to scripture, Lord God, you've been using, Lord God, open vessels, Lord God, to speak to us, Lord God, directly, Lord God, and we thank you for your word, Lord God, today, Father God, Lord, it's your word, Lord God, that transforms us, Lord God, that changes us, Lord God, that renews us, Lord God, that heals us, Lord God. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord Jesus. I ask, Lord God, that you anoint my mind and my lips, Lord God. Anoint this service, Lord God. We give you all the glory and all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, we've been doing this study, amen, for those that have been here on the tabernacle. You know, and, and, and it's been very powerful. You know, Old Testament, New Testament, the tabernacle's in it, amen. So we went over a couple things, amen. I'm going to refresh us. We have been getting into uh, deep waters with the, with the Lord these last couple months, amen. We're no, no, we're no longer in shallow waters, amen. So if you don't know how to swim, amen, you're going to learn real fast because we've been in deep waters with the Lord, amen. We're going deeper and deeper. And the Lord is manifesting himself to us, showing us, amen, changing us, showing us that he's real, showing us that he shows up when we need him, amen, showing us that we're never left behind, that he's always there, he's always making a way, he's always opening a door, that's his will, amen. In the presence of the Lord, amen, we've been talking about the two offerings, you know, free will, half shekel, God's this. We've been talking about that God designed the tabernacle, amen. It's a copy of what's in heaven. We've been talking about the foundation, the walls, separation, justification, and sanctification, amen. The sanctuary, the wood, the gold, the silver, the church, the thorn bush, the brass altar. The brass altar, amen. Uh, the purpose of the sin substitution. 
the utensils, representation, the laver, washing. Oh, thank you. You know, the brass altar, the, the purpose of the sin substitution, amen, on what it was and, and, and the cross and Jesus going to the cross being the substitute, the Lamb of God, amen. Blemish with, uh, with, without spot or wrinkle, amen. Sinless. We're talking about the representation, the laver, amen, where you go, the basin, where you go and you wash yourself, amen. A reflection of what you look like, a reflection of what of what your life was to what it is in Christ, amen. The washing, the blood, the spirit, the water, new creation, new life. Without it, we cannot enter, amen. Without it, we cannot enter into the Holy of Holies. And then last, uh, last week, amen. Uh, but the laver, amen, the washing was before we entered into the tent, amen. And then Brother, uh, Brother Jerry did the lampstand. The light of the world cannot, cannot, will not be hidden, amen. And as we entered, amen, into the tent, as we get closer and closer, it's been like a roller coaster. We've been learning all these things. Man, we got to go in. We got to go in through Jesus. Amen. We got to go through sacrifice. Sacrifice what? Sacrifice our old relationships. Sacrifice, amen, our, our old habits, our drug addictions, amen, our stealing, amen. Maybe we stole, maybe our lying, our jealousy, everything, sacrificing it, amen, and then washing ourselves. And then going into and seeing Jesus as the light, amen, lighting up the whole room. And now we go to the lap, now we go to um, the table of showbread, amen. The table of showbread. The table of showbread would have been facing the north, amen. So on the tabernacle, the east was the gate, amen, on the east side. So you had the east, east, right? That's where the gate was facing, amen. You had the opening to go into the tabernacle, amen. The lab stand was on the south side, okay? And the showbread was on the north side. And then you had the Holy of Holies, amen? And they all represented things. They all has a meaning to it, amen? Going from the east, who's coming from the east, amen? Jesus Christ, he said, you better look up, amen? On the east, not the south side, not the north, not the west. He said the east, amen? The entrance, he's coming in. So God is good, amen. We're going to read off this book. Pastor Marty Gale, amen. We've been just teaching it, and, and it's been powerful. The showbread table, amen. And I tried to do in a little illustration, amen, but it kind of tipped over, but we're still good, amen. We're going to keep going. The bread is still good. It fell on the floor for three seconds, amen. Three-second rule, you know, I'm going to eat it. So we're good, amen. I'll eat that one. Don't worry about it. And man, we walk in the door of the Mishkan into the holy place. And to our left, see the menorah. Looking to our right, we see a little table called the showbread table. Amen. And later on, we're going to learn that it has different names. The bread of the face. The showbread table is directly across the room from the menorah. And the altar of incense is in the middle up closer to the holy of holies. There are three pieces in the holy place. Remember that we are in the church, and this is altogether a matter of ministry, amen? Brother Jerry was saying that all this leads to ministry, amen? The tabernacle, ministry, it leads us to Jesus Christ and the church and what he wants us to do. In the church, you are a minister. In the church, there is ministry. You minister to people and to God, and this is your halakha, walk with God. Your ministry is in both directions. Your ministry is to people and to God. The showbread table is going to show you all about ministering to people because this is what the showbread table is about. Amen? Ministry. Giving to the Lord. <coughs> Offering. The showbread table has three things on it. It has the bread, the wine, and the frankincense. Amen? I try to go all out, try to get a pitcher and bowls and stuff, but, you know, it didn't work. So I was like, I, I'll use what I got. Amen? So basically, this is so exciting. You're going to see the pictures that the Lord has drawn, and it's going to be wonderful, amen? He puts everything in front of us. The table is three feet by one foot and a half feet wide and a little over two feet tall, amen? So about this size of the table is three feet tall, two feet tall, three feet wide, and, and a foot and a half, amen? 
It's a small table made out of acacia wood and overlaid with gold. And we know what acacia wood is. Acacia wood was grown out in the desert, amen. It really didn't need water, amen. So it was resistant. It was resistant to mold, to wet, to moisture. That's why the Lord used it, amen. And it was in the desert. And who was in the desert? The Israelites. So they used acacia wood. And they overlaid it with gold. And we went over it that gold means purity, amen. This table has the ministry and the church resting on it. All the ministry you do with people in the church should be resting on the Lord. Everything that we do should be resting on the Lord. It should never be a ministry of the flesh, but one of your ministry, always resting on the Lord, should involve, God is supposed to be involved in your ministry. So you set all these ingredients for ministering to people on the showbread table on the wood overlaid with gold. The table isn't very big, but it has some utensils, plates, bowls, pitchers, cups, and some conchas on it. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Ingredients, bread, frankincense, and wine. Amen. We're going to talk about the bread. Let's talk about the bread first. The ingredients for it are in Leviticus 24, 5 through 9. Amen. We're not going to go there, but Leviticus chapter 24, verses 5 through 9. Amen. Take fine flour and break Bake 12 loaves of bread using two tenths of an ephah for each loaf. Set them in two rolls, six in each roll, on the table of pure gold before the Lord. Along each roll put some pure incense as a memorial portion to represent the bread and to be an offering to be made to the Lord by fire. This bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly on, on the Sabbath, after Sabbath, on the behalf of the Israelites as a long-lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons, who are, they, who are to eat in a holy place because it is most holy part of their regular share of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. Amen. And why 12 loaves? Well, 12, the number 12 is significant. Amen. If we don't know what the number 12 means, it means the 12 tribes of, of, of Judah. Amen. The 12 tribes of Israel. And we all know that the 12 tribes were surrounded, they surrounded the tabernacle around it, amen. Tabernacle was in the center and then the 12 tribes surrounded the tabernacle. Amen, the bread is to be put in two rows and consist of two tenths of an ephah. That's a gallon, a gallon. How many quarts in a gallon? Four, amen. How many of you ladies have made a loaf with one gallon of flour? Amen, one loaf with a gallon of flour will make a big loaf, amen. And it wasn't easy putting these breads on top of each other, amen, but the showbread was bigger, was wider. It wouldn't fit on the little showbread unless these loaves are only four inches in diameter and about five feet tall, sitting like little pillars, but that wouldn't work either. They would fall over. So the writer says, I got confused and said, okay, Lord, what is the deal here? So I looked up the Hebrew word for roll, and the Hebrew says pile or roll. Anyone who can do their math should have translated it pile, not roll, because it won't fit. Two piles will fit. Amen. A roll of six and a roll of six. Amen. The Talmud says that the bread is 75 pounds altogether. Amen. Imagine that. The whole bread together is 75 pounds. Amen. That's, that's heavy. That's some heavy. 75 pounds of bread, even though it's unleavened bread. They are pretty big loaves. There needs to be two piles. Each loaf is probably three or four inches thick and about 16 inches across. That would be about one gallon of unleavened bread. There would be six of them stacked up and it would be about a foot and a half or two feet tall in big piles, amen? And that was probably a foot and a half right there, amen? So it was stacked high. I gotta go through this, amen? I gotta read this. It's gonna get gooder and gooder, amen? That would fit. Then there would be room for all the utensils. Amen. There has to be two bowls and two pitchers. And they're on two plates. I don't know about the other pitchers. If the cups are just there and the pitchers are brought out. Or if all of them are sitting, to, are sitting there. But this is the only way to make room for all the unleavened bread. Each loaf weighing six pounds. And there are 12 of them. That's how it's arranged. Two big piles and all the utensils sitting on it. Amen. God is good, so that was the showbread, right? And then they got the wine as mentioned as a drink offering, and drink offerings were always wine. You wouldn't bring a drink offering of water because water has no value, and drink offerings were not oil because 
people don't drink oil, amen? And drink offerings. So the wine is the drink offering. And the reference says you have, have pitchers for the drink offering that would sit on the table. This means there's also wine sitting on the table. And then you have frankincense, amen, which is perfume. It made it smell good. The third ingredient, frankincense, smells good, but you don't eat it. Some spices can be eaten and smell good, but frankincense is used only for perfume. You can burn it, or you can just sit on it, sit, let it sit on the table. If you crush it and grind it up, it smells good. It makes an entire holy place smell good just sitting on the table. I mean, that's how strong it is. That's how strong it is. And that represents the ministry of the church, amen. You got those three. You got the frankincense, the wine, and the bread, amen. And this table was overlaid with gold. It was acacia wood. Everything was out of gold. But the utensils was pure gold, amen. It was pure gold. Purity, yep. Amen. But don't confuse the incense with the incense that was put on the altar of incense with the priest would come in the morning and in the evening sacrifices. Amen. This represents the ministering the church to each other and to people. Amen. This represents the ministry in the church to each other and to people. I'll tell you later how the altar of incense is ministering to God, and that's in the next teaching. So in the holy place, you have Jesus standing there directing the ministry by light, by the anointing. You have two kinds of ministries, ministering to people, the showbread table, amen? The showbread table, ministering to people. And it's been very powerful, amen, because we've been talking about, amen, dining with the Lord, the table at the king's table, the feast, amen, the banquet, amen? Talking to the Lord, staying still and talking to the Lord. So the Lord's telling us something, amen? Ministering to people. How many of you have been helped or, or, or been a help to people? Amen. I know the church has helped me and my family a lot. Amen. With everybody doing, you know, the, the, the dinners and, and everybody helping out. What do you guys need? What do we need? Everybody's being helpful. That's the ministry. That's what God's talking about. Ministering to people. Amen. And we've been ministering together. And the Lord's been showing us that he's been knitting us together. Amen. As a body. Christ in the center. And he's been ministering to us. Amen. And he's been showing us and he's been speaking very powerfully. So it represents ministry, amen. Ministry, helping people. Ministering to people. And I want to share something right now. An example of, of how I was ministered to, amen. In a great way. And this is going to lead to to mercy and grace, amen. I know pastor preached the sermon about mercy and grace. It doesn't excuse you, amen, to continue sinning, amen. But it was mercy and grace, amen. And this connects to helping people and ministering to people, amen. God said that this showbread, amen, the table of showbread is for two things, to minister to people and to minister to God, amen. There was one time where I went and, and we killed a bull, amen. We went up here down down uh, down Highway 7. We went in there. It was me, my dad, and my uncle. We went and we slaughtered a, it was a bull. We slaughtered a bull, amen. You know, I called pastor. He knew I was there. You know, he was he was doing his thing, amen. And, and they said that wine's a, you know, bitter taste. You know, it's bitter and, and, and it got a sweet taste, but then it'll bite you, amen, like a snake. So that day, that day I'm a Christian, amen, right? I'm a Christian. I know the Lord. I'm serving next to pastor, right? And, I, and I'm over there with my uncle. So a little bit of sip, a little bit of wine, right? A little bit of wine got me going. Okay, so we're going a little bit of more wine and a little bit of more wine. By the time I knew it, I was gone, amen? By the time I knew it, I was gone. By the time I knew it, I went to my house. My wife was there. My mom came down the stairs knocking on the ground. Misa, where is he? Is he here? They were pulling on my shirt. I think I heard my mom going up the stairs because I wanted to leave. The enemy came and he put fear in me, saying that somebody was looking for me to kill me. So I had to leave my own house, and I had to leave. I ran out the door. My wife and my mom, I had to push them out, and I pushed them down, and, and I ran up the stairs, and then I went into a park. I was lost. I went into a park, and I started crying by myself. And this whole time, who, who they call pastor, amen? They call pastor, ma'am, he says, gone, I don't know where he's at. He's gone. 
Amen. But man, ministering to people, amen. I want to, this is what the Lord's talking about, ministering to people, amen. And we're going to see mercy and grace here. We're not just going to see, okay, hey, I was a Christian, I did this, keep on doing it because, you know, God's mercy and grace is sufficient for you to keep on drinking. No, that's a lie, amen. You want to change your life. So pastor was looking for me, amen. I believe he even went down to Jerry's to a bar to go look for me. He went in there, he probably was looking for me. I was lost. He went into the room. He kind of almost broke the, the, the door to the back room of where my dad is. They call him La Casita, amen. He went back there. He opened the door. My dad, his friend, and I, my uncle was there. They were all stuck. You know what I mean? It's like they seen, you know, they seen an angel or something, a warrior. They're like, boom, open the door. And they were just like in shock. And pastor's like, where's Misa? Where's Misa, amen? But this is, this is true love, and this is where ministering, amen, to people, ministering to your sheep, ministering, amen, to those, amen, that God has put before you. Mercy and grace. Okay, so I showed up, and pastor pulled up. He pulled up, he said, get in. Boom, right away, like a little baby. Bam, I went right in the truck, amen. You know where he took me? He took me to his house. I was in the garage. I was drunk. I was, a, I was a cussing sailor at his house. I still remember that. I was cussing at his house in his garage. Amen. And you know what he was showing me? He was showing me mercy and grace. He was showing me love. Brother, it's going to be okay. Brother, it's going to be okay. You know, and then I went home. I had to face my wife. I had to face everything. I thought ministry was over. You know, I went in there. And the next day, I thought pastor was going to kick me out of church. I had to go back to the home. You know, I had to... I thought pastor was going to tell me, hey, man, you need to sit down. You need, you, know, you need to sit in the back for a while. You know, you're getting drunk. But mercy and grace took place that, in that moment, amen? Instead of pastor judging me or, or accusing me and telling me my faults, you know what he did? He ministered to me in love. He ministered to me telling me it's going to be okay. He, he didn't kick me out. He didn't say, I'm pastor, move. You know what I mean? I'm going to kick you out. I'm going to sit you down. I'm going to do this. But it was mercy and grace that showed up, amen? And that's what, that's what I got from that message where he's, you know, the ministry of, of mercy and grace. It's where, where you do mess up, amen? Because we're messed up, right? We got problems. So it's when you sin, when you have a problem, you fall into sin, amen? The mercy and grace shows up, amen? You know what it does to you? It shows you God's love. You know what it does to you? It changes you. It doesn't want to, it makes you not want to go back and do that again because you hurt people. I hurt my wife. I hurt my mom. I hurt those around me that haven't seen me drink like that in, in over years. And they seen me fall like that. But when pastor picked me up and he took me to his house and I was cussing like crazy, he held me at his house. He didn't say, brother, go home. You can't be cussing here. Go home. He didn't put tape over my mouth. Amen? He was there, and he showed ministry to me. He showed how to minister to somebody, how to minister. And that's what the, the, that's what the, the bread, the showbread, the table represents. It's ministering. Amen? Ministering to people. There's two, ministering to people and ministering to God. Amen? And him in doing that, he was ministering to me, and he was ministering to God because God was God was moving as well. So it was mercy, amen? It was mercy and grace. Something very powerful, amen? I could have got down. I could have left the church. I could have felt bad. I could have not showed up for two weeks. But the next service, I was there, amen? I was there, ashamed. I was there, ashamed. But guess what? God took my shame away, amen? He cleansed me. He said, everything's going to be okay. I love you. I'm going to wash you, amen? amen? You bumped up, but you're going to get back up, amen? And we all like that. We all fall down, but we're going to get back up, amen? amen. Ministering to people, amen? I want to go to Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. The showbread table. Ministering to people and ministering to God. You know, and, and, and that didn't happen once, it happened twice. I think it happened a couple times. But through that, I was able to grow. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't put to shame. I wasn't beat up. But I was lifted up. And man, I wasn't, I wasn't put down. But he lifted his hand and, and he got me up. And he ministered. You know, and a lot of times, Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. 
And a lot of times now, in these days, we, we, we minister, you know, and uh, we minister in the wrong way, amen? We minister, you know, a lot of Christians minister that, that we do have to be perfect. A lot of people minister that, hey, we are perfect. I don't have no mistakes. You know, I do everything right. I have my walk. My life is perfect. But it's not. It's far from that. And the Lord's speaking to us. He says that, that mercy, amen. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, he says. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And we're going to see an instant where he showed mercy. God's word says, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice in the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. And we're going to go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. And Jesus was sitting with the tax collectors, right? And the Pharisees are like, what is he doing with tax collectors? What is he doing with sinners? Why is he sitting over there with sinners? Right? And he was teaching them something. He said, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mercy and not sacrifice. Amen. So the showbread shows us. Amen. Mercy and not sacrifice. It shows us to minister to people and minister to God. And we're going to get there. Amen. Matthew 12 verses 1 through 8. Is good. We're going to read this. At the time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Remember, Pastor preached that the Sabbath is what? Was the rest. That the Sabbath was made for man, or man was made for the Sabbath. Man was made for the Sabbath, amen, not Sabbath for the man. He says, but he said to them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and he ate the showbread. He ate this bread, amen, in the Old Testament. He was hungry and he ate. And we're going to see more about it right now. Not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest. And David, was he a priest at the time? He wasn't a priest at the time. He ate the showbread. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that this place, there is one greater than the temple. But if you have not known what this means, I desire mercy and I sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltiness. For the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. So what about David? He ate the showbread, amen? He wasn't a priest, so that means that David would, would have had done a sacrifice, would have had gone through the laver, the basin, and he would have had to go through inside the Holy of Holies just to eat the showbread, right? Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. And we, and we see a lot of mercy and grace through David, amen? What about when, when he killed, uh, you, uh, what's his name, Uriah or Husiah? Uriah. Uriah. What about when he killed Uriah? Innocent blood. He was supposed to die. Wasn't he king? He was supposed to die. Innocent blood. Right? Took somebody else's wife. And he was supposed to die. But God showed mercy and grace. Amen? It says, now David came to Nob, the Amalek, the priest. And Amalek was afraid when he met David and said to him, why are you alone and no one is with you? So David said to Amalek, the priest, the king has ordered me on some business and said to me, do not let anyone know anything about the business on which I send you or what I have commanded you. And I have direct, directed my young men to do to such and such a place. So he lied to the priest. He said, the king sent me to get this bread. The king sent me on a mission. Don't tell nobody I was here. So David was a liar. He lied to the priest in his face and said, I need, the king sent me. <coughs> now therefore what have you on hand give me five loaves of bread in my hand or whatever can be found and the priest answered David and said there is no common bread on hand but there is holy bread if 
the young men have at least kept themselves from women, and men which they have, which they were at war. Then David answered the priest and said to him, Truly, women have been kept from us about three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in effect common, even though it was consecrated in the vessel this day. <clears throat> so the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread which had been taken from the Lord, in order to put hot bread in its place on the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Dog and Adamai, and the chief of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. Amen. So he lied. David lied. He lied, and he got the showbread, right? He should have been struck down by the Lord. He should have been struck. The priest, that's another question I'm still trying to figure out. I'm trying to tell the Lord to show me what happened. Amen. But there was mercy and grace that happened there. David was able to eat the showbread. So every Sabbath, what the priests do is they change the bread to fresh bread. Amen. Every Sabbath, they change it and they do fresh bread. And the bread was for the Levites to eat, right? That's what they got. They got the inheritance of the Lord and there they were to eat in the holy place. They were to eat before the Lord. So they would grab the incense. There was a bowl of incense. They would grab the incense and put it at the altar of incense. Amen. And that would represent being in front of the Lord. Amen. So they were in front of the Lord in his presence and they would eat the bread. So right now, representing the ministry in the church, we're in front of the Lord. Amen. We're in front of the Lord. We're in his presence, but we can't see it. You, you know why we can't see it? Because of the flesh. And man, the flesh gets tired. The flesh gets irritated. The flesh thinks about the problems we have today. The flesh thinks about all the problems of the world. But the spirit, when we come into the church, the spirit needs to flourish. Know that we're in the house of the Lord. Know that we're the God is present. Knowing that he's working for us. Knowing that he has our back. And that he's moving things. Amen. That's how the spirit is. We got to know that when we come, we're in front of the Lord spiritually. And that's how it was with the priest. So every, every, every seven days they would switch it out, amen? But mercy and grace, I believe that Jesus brought this up, amen, to show the Pharisees that it was mercy and grace. So when pastor picked me up and when I was drunk and when I was cussing, pastor showed me mercy and grace, amen? And it was through Jesus. Jesus was there. Jesus was working. The Holy Spirit was working through pastor to show me mercy and grace instead of beating me up, instead of telling me he was lifting me up. Just like David, he's, the Lord said mercy and grace. He's trying to tell the Pharisees the mercy and grace, amen? And the showbread, imagine that. Jesus, amen? The tabernacle among his disciples, amen? The, the grain fields, amen? Was the showbread, amen? And they were eating the grains. They were eating the showbread. They were eating the bread. They were communing with the tabernacle, amen? When, they, the, when the Pharisees seen them, they seen Amen. They had the tabernacle. Jesus was there present. Amen. It was open, the grain fields. And that's what Jesus was trying to show the Pharisees, that it was mercy and grace. That he was greater. What did he say on, um, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 12, verses 8. He said that, that he was greater. Amen. For the Son of Man is Lord, even over the Sabbath. Amen. That's kind of to say what? Does Jesus make up the rules or what? <coughs> no, he's Lord, right? He can switch up the world, the, the rules if he wants. He's the Lord. Amen. But his point was that mercy and grace. Amen. For our brothers and sisters to minister. To minister, amen, in the church. To minister to each other like we've been. And the Lord's been working mightily. Amen. Man, I thank everybody that's helped us out. Amen. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. That means a lot. Amen. That means a lot. And if we can help each other out, amen, God's doing a great thing. And, and, and knitting us together as a body, amen. I don't know what part of the body you feel like you are, amen. The big toe, the pinky, amen, the arm, the hand. But you're doing a good job. God is good. He's, God is moving. Amen. So part of that was, was ministering to people, showing mercy and grace. Amen. The aspect is that they are offerings. You've probably heard many messages on giving. Amen. But the showbread, amen, is a, 
It's a part of giving. Amen. It's a part of giving because we come to the church and we give, right? You give your time. You give your time to the Lord. You got to put time aside. You got to pray. You got to read your word. Amen. We got to give our tithes. We got to give our offerings. Amen. And that's what the, the priest did, the Levites. It was a representation of giving and offering, which is very powerful. Amen. Because your giving is not done in vain. So that was the bread. Right? The 12 loaves, the 12 tribes, the ministry of the bread. And the show, and the call, the, the showbread table, and the bread is called the showbread. Amen? Because we show it. Pastor said face to face, right? In Hebrew, is the bread of face. The face is how we say the presence. Face to face with the living God. Amen? So when we come to church, it's face to face with the living God. So we have the bread as an offering to the Lord, and it's called the bread of his face because he sat right in the holy place in the presence of God. <clears throat> you come to a holy place with your offering, and you give it to God face to face. This is what means coming to church face to face with the Lord. Then the church gets to use it. Your offering is given to the presence of God directly to him. And it's called the bread of his face because it sits right in front of him. Amen. We sit right in front of him. Amen. You may not believe it, but you need to believe it in the spiritual realm that when we sit in these chairs, pastors up here preaching the word, we're sitting in front of God. Amen. Amen. In a spiritual sense, God is in this place. Amen. And that's the showbread. Amen. The incense. Amen. The incense represent prayers. These are bowls and incense on showbread table. These are our prayers for each other. Amen. Lifting each other up when we're sick. Lifting each other up when somebody's gone, amen. When somebody's going through somebody, through something, amen. God is there in the presence. What about on Friday nights? Amen. We come in, but we got to come in believing that God's in the midst. The incense, that's what it represented is our prayers all together. The incense would be sitting on the showbread table. And the whole room where Messiah is standing and where all the intercession is going on and where all the ministry to each other is going on and it smells so good, amen. Say, I smell good. Amen. Not if you've been working all day, maybe. Maybe you didn't smell it too good, huh? but you still smell good. Huh? I smell good. We smell good to the Lord. Amen. When we come in here, we're a sweet aroma, Romans 12.1. Amen. And we have to believe this. We have to grasp onto it. Amen. Because the flesh is not going to get excited. We have to dominate the flesh. The flesh don't get excited about coming to church. Amen. The flesh don't get excited about prayer. Amen. The flesh don't get excited about reading the word. The flesh don't get excited about giving, about offering. The flesh doesn't get excited, but it gets excited. Right? When you, when you don't come to church, the flesh gets excited. Amen. When we miss church, when we're tired. Amen. Like Pastor said, he shows mercy and grace. He knows when we're sick, amen. He knows when we got to do something, amen. But if you're, if you're not coming to church, amen, because you're not doing nothing and you're tired or because or you don't feel like coming to church, amen, that's the flesh. The presence of God is shining, amen. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Living sacrifice. That's why we come to church. Amen. We're a living sacrifice. The people are eating the bread, sharing the bread of life. This is the incense. And it's sitting right on the table, and it's all in the presence of God. We're all in the presence of God. Remember when you pray in fellowship that it's in the incense, and it's the bread. You're sharing and welcoming the church into a holy place. Amen. Amen. Ushering the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the bread, the sharing, the praying, the smell good to God. People are feeding each other bread, feeding each other Jesus. Amen. Amen. Together. Songs and hymns. Spiritual songs and hymns. Together. That's what it represents. The holy place is a good room to be in. Amen. It's a good room to be in here right now. Amen. Because when we come to the altar, guess what? We're in the presence of God. You have to believe that when we come to the altar, amen, we're going to be in the presence of God and he's going to wash us, amen. He's going to strengthen us, amen. He's going to show us. He's going to convict us in our hearts what we need to change. He's going to show us what parts in, a, in our life, amen, the flesh is dominating. We have to dominate the flesh. 
put it under submission. <coughs> what, we walk by the flesh or we walk by the spirit? By the spirit, right? We should have walked by the spirit, but a lot of Christians are walking by the flesh because they're not taught how to walk by the spirit. They're not taught how to continually walk by the spirit, continually seek Jesus. And the third object on the table, so we got the bread, the incense, is the wine, amen? And after the wine, I'm going to come to a close, amen? Three objects. You got the bread, the incense, and then the wine. The priest would bring an offering of wine, and the wine would be a drink offering. The wine can represent blood, and you know you're washed in the blood, bought with a price. You're not your own anymore. But I think one of these things the wine would represent on the showbread table in the church atmosphere is the joy of the Lord. Amen. And I've never heard that, that the blood represents, amen, would represent on the table of showbread the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. There's no much, there's so much joy in the presence of God when the lamp shines, amen. You got the lamp shining, you got the bread, you got the incense, and you got the wine. And this is a joy the world can never know, amen. When I go to work, a lot of people see me and they, and they, and they acknowledge and they want to know what this, what this is that I have, amen? Why, why am I so joyful at work when things go wrong? Why am I always smiling? Why am I always going about my day when things happen, amen? It's because of the joy of the Lord. God is so powerful, amen? And I know that this is how he's working. Amen, yesterday, was it yesterday, babe, that I mentioned to you? It was yesterday. And I, and I never take my time, but I took my time to make a cup of coffee at work, amen. Every, all the guys went outside. I took my time. I was there by myself. A supervisor came in. He said, will you pray with me for my son? Amen. And it was an appointed time. It was an appointed time because from what I've learned from ministry, this is what God means to minister to other people. And God's going to bring people in your life. And, he's, and don't miss that chance to be able to minister to somebody in your life, whether they need prayer, whether they need a word of encouragement, whether they need a, a, a word from the Lord. Amen. Man, they need encouragement. Encourage them. That's a, that's a fruit of the Spirit, right? Encourage them. They're going through some suicide thoughts. I'm depressed. Amen. I'm, I have anxiety. <coughs> Time to minister. That's what it means to minister to people. Amen. To minister to people so I was able to minister to him I was able to minister to him and that's what was powerful that God ascended that he, he appointed that that time to minister amen and if I would have left a, a minute earlier or if I would have left I would have missed my chance to minister to somebody and as we grow up and as the Lord is teaching us amen and he's showing us in his presence. We begin to start ministering to people. Amen. We start getting closer. We're leaving the world. We're getting into the altar. Amen. We're washing ourselves. We're going into the temple. Right? Ministering to people is no longer about us. Right? Just make disciples, the Lord said. Make disciples. Man, it's time to minister to people. God wants to use you. God wants to use us. He's using us, amen? He doesn't want to use us. He's using us. So be open, amen, because he's going to bring somebody about your path, amen? And that could be that person, amen, that God wants to use, amen, to buy this building. Amen? God works like that. He'll bring people, amen? But if we're not open about it, if we don't know what, what the tabernacle is all about, if we're not listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying, amen, we're going to miss our chance. So the wine represents joy, amen? Joy. Where would you be right now if it wasn't for the joy of the Lord? Where would you be right now? Ask yourself if it, was, if it wasn't for the salvation of the Lord. Amen. A lot of us would be in jail. A lot of us would be dead. A lot of us would be divorced. A lot of us, amen, would be somewhere else, would be in the world. But how would it life be if you had never been in this room? Amen. If you've never been here. It's joyful to minister to people. It's joyful to give them a piece of the bread of life. It's joyful to intercede for them and pray for them. It's joyful. That's the joy of the Lord. Amen. It has to be joyful. Whether we're going through circumstances, whether we're going through trials, it has to be joyful going through it. Amen. It's pouring out your life to people. Pouring out your life out to people. Pouring your life out 
as a minister of the new covenant. Remember, we are in outer court and washed in the blood and we were sanctified in the laver so we could move into the holy place and become ministers of the new covenant. So here we are in the presence of the menorah with the showbread table glowing in the gold. And, in, and it is ministry. All of these are offerings. You bring your ministry to the Lord and it's like an offering to him. Do you smell good today? The writer says, do you smell good today once again? <coughs> Amen. So there's a golden table in the holy place with bread and wine and incense on it. Welcome to the church, everybody. Welcome to the church. Amen. We bring offerings to the Lord and they are set before his face and they are most holy. The showbread table is a matter of ministry. The bread is Yeshua and we all eat and feed each other on the bread of life. We consecrate it and pour it out as a drink offering to the Lord and it's a joyful thing. We pour our lives out to each other and we pray for each other. We intercede for each other, and this is the incense, the church, and all its relationships and ministry smell wonderful to the Lord. That's what smells good to the Lord when we do things for each other, when we minister to each other, when we pray for each other, when we lift each other up. Smells wonderful to the Lord. His holy habitation is an aroma pleasing to Him. What a place to be. Look around at the church. Do you have a story to tell somebody? Do you have a you know, a word to tell somebody, amen, the joy of the Lord. So the Lord fills us up and we go out, amen, and we got to tell people about Jesus. We got to tell people of what he's done. Do you have a story? Do you have a testimony? Do you have something little, amen, something little that you can feed somebody of the Lord? We're going to come to a close, amen, with uh, John 6, verse 35. And we all know that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. And this represents so many other things. Amen. That, that uh, we would like to share, that we would love to share. Amen. But I, I stuck to the book. Amen. And, and this is what the book said it represents. Amen. We stuck to the writer. Represents offering. Amen. Represents ministry to people, ministry to God. Your ministry, like Pastor said when he was up here, you got to minister. Find out one spot in the morning, amen? Maybe it's your dinner table. Amen? Maybe it's your, in, in your bed before you wake up. But I believe if you respect somebody enough, especially God, you would get out of bed and, 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 and pray proper respects to God and wake up and sit up and talk to him, amen, face to face. Drink your cup of coffee, but you have to be fed, amen? God says, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. We should never hunger or thirst anymore. But what does this mean? Is it physical or spiritual? It's, it's spiritual, right? We should never hunger for, for joy. And man, when I was in the world, I always hungered for peace. I always hungered for, to be sober. I asked the Lord, why can't I stop drinking, Lord? Why can't I stop drinking? And it became real, and he answered my prayer, and he showed me. It was a spiritual battle. When I went to Adams County, there was a Bible on that little desk. And, man, it was cold when I sat down. They turn on the AC in there, right? They don't turn on no, no heater. AC all night, just boom, just all night, full blast. But either way, I opened that Bible, and he took me to Romans chapter 7. Amen. I, I didn't even know the Lord like that, but he answered me. And we will never hunger or thirst. He is the bread of life. So what are you hungry for, amen? If you guys would stand with me, please. I ask you, what are you hungry for, amen? Are you hungry for more, for more of the world? Amen, are you, are you hungry to be more satisfied in the way you live? Are you hungry to be more satisfied in your relationship? Are you hungry, amen, for the things of the world? Amen, because the things of the world, it brings chaos, amen? I had consequences, amen? When God showed me mercy and grace, and he used pastor to show me mercy and grace, guess what? I still had consequences, amen? There's mercy and grace, but there's consequences. David had a consequence. What happened to his kid that he had with uh, Bathsheba, the first one? He died. There was consequences, amen? What happened when he ate the bread of the showbread? You know what happened? All, the priests died. 
right? All but one. Saul went and he killed all the priests. All but one. But there's consequences. Yes, there's mercy and there's grace. Okay? But there's consequences to what our actions. There's consequences when we sin. There's consequences when we say no to God and we say yes to the world. And the Lord wants us to show us and He's ministering to us because we minister to the Lord by the way we, we walk. We minister to the Lord by the way we live, by the way we discipline ourselves. We had, we had a teaching on discipline too. We had a sermon. Pastor preached on discipline. Man, God's been speaking. He's been here. Amen. Are we hungry for God? Are we hungry for the spiritual things? Or are we hungry for the flesh? Amen. I know. I know we have to eat to survive, right? We have to eat. But we can't just stop fasting. We can't just do one week of fasting and stop fasting. Amen. We got to keep on fasting. Discipline yourself. That was just a starter to start fasting and to train yourself to keep on fasting and seeking the Lord. Amen. That's what the Lord, pastor said, prayer, prayer, fasting and prayer. Don't just do that one week. Keep it going. Discipline yourself to fast. Discipline yourself to get closer to the Lord. Discipline yourself, amen, to be hungry for the things of God, to be hungry to walk righteous, to be hungry to tell the truth always, not to be a liar, amen, to be hungry, amen, not to steal, to be hungry for the things of the Lord. Minister, amen. We're going to open up the, the altar, amen. And we're going to come and we're going to minister to the Lord. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We're going to minister to the Lord because that's what the showbread is, to minister to the Lord. Amen. And when we walk up here, amen, the Lord is real. It's a real relationship. You guys can make your way up here. Amen. I'll, I'll be closing. But it's real. It's a relationship. And we get closer and closer. And, and, and the more we listen, the more he shows us that he loves us. That he waits for us in the morning to call out to him. That he waits for us when we've been gone, when we had a long day. He waits for us to come to him, amen? And today we, we minister to him. Today we're, we're a fragrance. We're an aroma pleasing to the Lord right now. Because he loves us. That's the showbread, amen? An offering to the Lord. An offering, amen? What are you ministering to the Lord that you trust Him? Are you ministering to the Lord that you trust Him through all your problems that's happening right now? Are you ministering, Lord, I trust you, Lord. Lord God, I trust you, Lord God, that you're going to make a way, Lord God, for my family. I trust you, Lord God, Lord, that you're going to make a way for this ministry, Lord. We minister to you right now, Lord God, knowing, Lord God, that my kids, Lord God, are in your hand, Lord God. We minister to you, Lord God, that you're a great God, Lord. That you're a loving God, Lord. We love you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We minister to you right now, Lord God, because you're great, Lord. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit.
every moment, my God, every minute, Lord God, every hour of the day, Lord. Let me find that time, my God, hallelujah, to come sit at the table, Lord God, and bring bread, Lord God. Because you, Lord God, are that bread of life, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God. You, Lord God, are that bread, Lord God, when we eat of you, Lord God, that we will never hunger again, Lord God. Because you're just that good, my Lord. We, Lord God, as people, Lord God, we have a desire, Lord God, to always, Lord God, want to want to go after things, Lord God, and want more, Lord God, because we're not satisfied, Lord God. But once we get a taste of you, Lord God, once we grab a hold of you, Lord God, you are that bread of life, Lord God, and we shall never hunger again, Lord, because you satisfy, Lord God, you fulfill, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are the living waters, Lord God. Yes, with the washing of the water of the word, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. It's life, Lord God. It brings life to that death that's inside of us, Lord God. That brings life, Lord God. Hallelujah and strength, Lord God. And I thank you here tonight, Lord God, that you are the living waters, Lord God. Oh, yes, Lord. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Lord, you deserve all the glory, my God. You deserve all the honor, my King. Hallelujah, Lord. Let us, Lord God, be in, Lord God, to walk in the Spirit, Lord God, as we're in our homes, Lord God, as we're sleeping, Lord God, as we're awake, Lord God. Let us glorify you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let us shout joy and praises, Lord God, unto your very name, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord. I thank you here today, Lord. I thank you for that grace and mercy, Lord God. And yes, I know, Lord God, that that is not an excuse to sin, Lord God, or to continue in sin, my God. But I thank you, Lord. Because if it had not been for that unfailing love, Lord God, Lord, where would we be, Lord God? If it would not have been, Lord God, for all the chances upon chances, Lord God, that you give us, Lord God, where would we be, Lord God? Man, Lord, you are so good. And Father, I just pray here tonight, Lord God, that you would open up the eyes, Lord God, of the religious, Lord God. I pray here tonight, Lord God, that you would open up the eyes, Lord God, of all the denominations, Lord God, around the world, Christian denominations, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that they would begin, Lord God, to run to you, my King. There shouldn't be any arguing over your word, Lord, because your word is true, Lord God. We shouldn't, Lord God, ever, you know what, have our own explanation or our own interpretation, Lord God. Because your word is already interpreted, Lord God. What you said, Lord God, is what you said, Lord God. And you made it simple enough, Lord God, for a youngin, Lord God, to understand, Lord. And Father, I come before you, Lord, knowing that I'm a work in progress, Lord God. I make no excuses, Lord God, for my faults, Lord God, or my failures, Lord God. But Lord, what I do ask, Lord God, is that you would help me, Lord. That you would help me, Lord God, to, you know what, break away, Lord God, from those things, Lord God, that so easily entangle us, Lord God. That you would help us, Lord God, to break away, Lord God, from the schemes and lies of the enemy, Lord God. Oh, Lord, your word says, come taste and see how good the Lord is. Oh, and the enemy wants us to come taste and see how deadly the world is. So right now, Lord God, open up our spiritual eyes. Open up our spiritual ears, Lord God, and soften our hearts, Lord God, here tonight, Lord, so that way we can walk, Lord God, in anointing. That way we can be filled, Lord God, to the full, Lord God, with the joy that you can only bring, Lord God, or give, Lord God. Also, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for all the men and women of integrity, Lord God, in this place, Lord. They're trying, Lord God. 
They're trying, Lord God, and Lord, it's a wonderful thing, Lord God. All you can do, Lord God, is ask for somebody to give it a shot, to try it. And then you put people alongside him, Lord, that will help them, Lord God, to grow, Lord God. And Father, I thank you for walking alongside us, Lord God. So that way when we walk alongside, Lord God, a disciple, Lord God, that we're able, Lord God, to lead them, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, on the straight and narrow, Lord. Yes, my God. I pray for every need, Lord God, in this church right now, Lord. Every need that any family may have, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, that you would meet that need, Lord, because you are faithful, Lord God. And your word says, Lord God, that I will provide your every need. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, we have to move from once, Lord God, but we have to begin to look, Lord God, to you for our needs, Lord God. You are what we need, Lord God. And Lord, man, I want to thank you here tonight, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for the price that you paid, Lord God, for the sins of the world, Lord God. Not just, Lord God, me or anybody here, Lord God, but for everybody in the world, Lord God. Oh, Lord. And I'm thanking you right now, Lord. I'm thanking you, Lord, for the salvation, Lord God, of all those that are lost right now, Lord God. They're coming in, Lord God. They don't even know it, Lord God, but we're praying them in, Lord God. We're praying in our families, Lord God. We're praying in strangers, Lord God. We're praying in friends, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are faithful, Lord God. Oh, Lord, stir them up right now, Lord God. Stir them up, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let them say the name of Jesus, Lord God, right now. Because your word says, Lord God, that demons tremble, Lord God, at the sound of your name, my God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Lord. I'm praying, Lord God, right now. I'm praying for this body, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord God, for all the leaders, Lord God, right here that are here tonight, Lord God. Even if they don't have a position, Lord God, they don't realize, Lord God, that they're moving into leadership, Lord God. You don't have to have a position to be a leader. Oh, you have to follow God to be a leader. And when you follow God, you become a leader. And Lord, I want to thank you for all the leaders in here, Lord. As you're raising them up, Lord God, as you're surrounding them, Lord God, with like-minded individuals, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, right now that you would use them, Lord God, in a mighty way, Lord God. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit, Lord. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now for moving in this place. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving in our lives. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for, you know what, comforting us and counseling us as we read the word. I thank you for interceding for us to Jesus as Jesus intercedes to the Father. Oh, hallelujah. We know that no prayer goes unheard. We know that no prayer goes unheard. Oh, Lord. But is it selfish, Lord God? Or is it godly? I pray tonight, Lord God, that if any of our prayers, Lord God, are selfish, Lord God, that we would cease, Lord God, from those prayers, but that we would begin, Lord God, to pray your very will, Lord God. And your will, Lord God, is for those to be saved, Lord God, for the lost to be saved, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all the honor. And you deserve all the glory, Lord. Yes, Lord. I like what Brother Misa said. He said that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that if we, if you mean something to us, you know what? That we're going to make a, a physical commitment, Lord God, to rise, Lord God. At any hour, Lord God, that you might wake us up, Lord God. And we're going to make sure, Lord God, that we're giving you our undivided attention, Lord God. With full, Lord God, spiritual respect, Lord God. Because you deserve that, Lord. And Lord, you're our King. You're our Lord. You're our Savior. You're our Father, Lord. Why wouldn't we want to respect you, Lord? 
I remember as we were growing up, Lord God, they used to teach us about respect. That when you are talking to somebody, that you should look them in the eyes. You know what? When you're shaking somebody's hand, that you should, you know what, give a firm grip. You know what? That you shouldn't interrupt when somebody else is talking and you should wait your turn. It's the same thing with you, Lord. A lot of times we're talking too much, Lord God, and we're interrupting your talking, Lord God. You've been trying to tell us something for years, Lord God, but we're so stubborn, Lord God, and, and you know what? We talk too much, Lord God, because we don't know how to be still. I'm praying here tonight, Lord God, that we would find, Lord God, that quiet place, Lord God, in our home, in our car, in our workplace, in our extracurricular activities, in every area of our life, Lord God, that we would find that time to meet with you, Lord God. And as we continue, Lord God, I know it's not going to be easy. It's a spiritual battle, Lord. You know what? The enemy doesn't want us to gain ground, uh, gain ground Lord God. You know what? He doesn't want us to, to build, Lord God, a kingdom, Lord God, for your glory and honor, Lord. And I know the enemy is going to do everything he can to try to keep us from getting a bigger place, Lord God, or, or, or a, you know, a bigger land, Lord God. But I know, Lord God, that you're faithful, Lord. Amen. And I know that the struggle and the fight is real, Lord God. So I'm asking you here tonight, Lord, to strengthen us in our weaknesses, yes. Lord God. Yes, Lord. And as we begin, Lord God, to continue, Lord God, in this spiritual battle, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would just, you know what, revive us, Lord God. Because I know, Lord God, some of us, Lord God, have been beat up and battered, Lord God. But nonetheless, we have to understand. We have to understand the Roman soldier's attire when he tells us to put on the armor. Underneath all that armor, Lord God, was red linen. And the reason why there was red linen is because any time a Roman soldier got stabbed or wounded... They didn't want anybody to see the blood. So, Lord, I'm praying here today, Lord God, that even if we're wounded, Lord God, even if we're, we're broken and, and struggling and hurting, Lord God, that we would continue fighting the good fight of faith. That we would continue pressing in, Lord God, as the enemy presses back, Lord. That we would press in, Lord God. Oh, press in and press in and press in, Lord. Something's got to give, Lord God. Those walls are come tumbling down, Lord God. I believe it when we sit in that quiet, still place, Lord God. Your trumpet sounds. So to you be all the honor, to you be all the glory, my Lord. We pray for traveling mercies, Lord God. And we lift up anybody that wasn't here tonight, Lord God, that you would encourage them, Lord God, to, you know what, just even when you don't want to or you don't feel like it, Lord God, that, you know, you just do it, Lord God, because they love you, Lord. And I'm praying, Lord God, right now that as we embark on our day tomorrow, Lord God, the 4th of Junio, 4th of July, that nobody would blow off their fingers and toes, Lord. <laughs> Burn down somebody's house, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Chip somebody's paint. Yes, Lord. But that we would have a good time, Lord God. That we would be able to enjoy, Lord God, the fellowship, Lord God, the food, Lord God, your presence, Lord God. And just, you know what, being, Lord God, with, with family, Lord God, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. I wish people would worship you, Lord God, and serve you like they celebrated the 4th of July, Lord God. They go all out, Lord God. They spend hundreds of dollars for fireworks, Lord God, for that only last five minutes, Lord God. But, Lord, they, they go all out. So I'm praying, Lord God, that Christians, Lord God, would begin to go all out for you, Lord God. Lord, that they would see, Lord God, that it's so exciting and it's so fun, Lord God, just to light the fuse, Lord God, and to see what you're going to do next. Hallelujah. Because you're an explosion waiting to happen. And what a sight it is, amen? What a sight it is when God's in control 
And when things, when the things that he does, it's a wonderful sight. Lord, thank you. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Don't forget the three-second rule. That bread's still good. Amen.